वेलकम टू विनिंग द गेम ऑफ लाइफ आई एम योर होस्ट शान छाबरा टुडे आई एम हैविंग ए वेरी इंस्पायर्ड डे बिकॉज आई हैव ए वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट हेयर विद मी हर नेम इज शायन जोय अजीज वेलकम टू द शो शायन थैंक यू इट्स सच एन ऑनर टू बी हियर थैंक यू फॉर रीचिंग आउट टू मी आई एम ग्रेटफुल Oh I'm 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 so thankful that you spared the time and you woke up this morning and got ready and I'm here with you. So I I know I know you a little bit but my some of my listeners and viewers may not know who Shayan is. How about you introduce yourself? Okay, that sounds wonderful. Well, hi, I'm Shayan Joyeziz and I am the author and co-creator of the international best-selling book and film Discover the Gift. and it's a a project that really focuses on who you are and what your authentic gifts are and your passions and and how to really hone in and discover the gifts of yourself of your adversities and of those around you and that's really been what i've been up to in my purpose and before that i'm a i'm a master educator and a counselor and i worked in public schools um for many many years and through that i really realized that the most important thing we can do is create a world where our children can thrive and that happens when we educate the, the adults in our communities and so it's really about the development of the adults so they can create a, a world where our children can really grow and thrive so like like was there any special event activity or time in your life like how how, how you turn from regular educator to this uh, this this personal growth Oh that's a wonderful question. So you know there are many things that happened in life that really created those steps for me. And um one of the things I really learned early on was that often our adversities will hold our greatest gifts if we're willing to do the work and to look deep within and see what really fuels us. You know our what really motivates us fascinates me. What really motivates people to change and transform and and so I think about adversity that's usually what supports people to make a change in their life one way or another and um when i was 12 my mother died in a car accident and 20 days before she died my house burned to the ground and so at the age of 12 my brother and i lost everything we knew to be true for ourselves and through that began this journey uh for myself of <clears throat> excuse me trying to find my own equilibrium my balance my place in the world again and um and that drove me to be an educator and the reason it drove me was total happenstance and one of those like ooh i didn't know that's what was going to work for me and when i was in college i had to do a community service project and since i love children one of the main things i did was i said oh i want to work with children so they gave me a list and long story short i picked this place to go be of service and um what i found out was that it was working with abused children and the more i worked with them the quicker i healed inside of me the the better i felt as a human being so the more i gave the better i felt and that quickly became my selfish reason to be of service which ended up spiraling into something really beautiful for me so it's unfortunate like you went through all that at the age of 12 but how how you were able to even support and become a positive person after going through all the all those trouble time i should call it's a really great question if we really look at all a lot of the people in the world who are doing big things that are supporting others and little things that are supporting others what's happened is that often in their life something has happened that shifted them and they saw there was a need and if we're able to be aware enough of who we are and our insights and the messages that come in from the universe all around us we're able to start to tap into and see that that's where growth is for some reason i don't know why i'm lucky enough that i had parents who both of them loved me so much that i never had a feeling of not being loved in life and that somehow allowed me to see that i was lucky that i had the 12 years of my mother that i did right and many kids don't even have a mom many children are looking for parents to love them or looking for that kind of connection and and i had the ability to be grateful and somehow gratitude brings me there all the time 
Actually, my mother lost her mother, I, I think, when she was only one or one and a half year old. Wow. And my mother loved everybody. Like, in my eyes, my mother was like a god. Like, God will love everybody all the time, no matter other person is good or bad. Yes, and that's, it did give me that. So what her loss created in me, the want to love, to serve, to be connected. That's really a big piece was that I wanted to be connected so badly that anything I could do that would support other people's connection to themselves and their development inspired me to continue to do more of that and to be of service. A minute before, you, you, I think you was trying to talk into gratitude, how, yes. how, how that works. Wow, gratitude to me is everything. Um, you know, when we focus on gratitude, if we just notice for a minute, listen, all your listeners who are with us, and if we just take a moment and take a nice deep breath in, and just think about the people and the places you're grateful for. And all of a sudden, notice how you're feeling. You could have been in a, a funky spot, a stressed out space, a place of not knowing what your next steps were. But what happens if we're willing to just take a moment and breathe and bring oxygen to our body and focus on gratitude, what happens is that it brings joy to our bodies immediately. You see, gratitude and joy go hand in hand. You can't attend to gratitude within yourself and not light up, right? And think about who you love and who you're grateful for and notice the feelings inside of you. That's called expansion. Right? And gratitude expands us. It creates an expansion within our being. And now when we're feeling in lack or stressed, we get contracted physically. And so one of the practices I really practice myself and believe in and share with others is to, when you find yourself not in a good place, take a moment if you can connect to that awareness and take a breath in and focus on gratitude. And you'll find that light starts showing up even if it's dark. And then you can think a little more clearly and make choices. Uh, I'm, I'm mesmerized. I'm, I'm, I'm somewhere else right now. Oh, yay. Out of the, it's, it's out of the word experience, you know. I'm having that right now. Do, do you believe like we are all one? Yes, I do believe we are all connected. We are, you know what I really believe is that we are individual trees and together the forest. That's what I believe. So we are not the branches of one tree? No, we are individual trees and underneath the roots are all connected and intertwined, right? If we look at a forest, you see all the individual trees everywhere, but underneath they are all like this and connected. The earth is connected as one being. How could we not be? Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. And, and I personally believe we are one. But yes. I just wanted to hear you, yeah. you know, because okay. this show is not about me. The show is about all my guests and their opinions. Yes. yes, absolutely. And connecting them to their own inner wisdom and the deeper places and dimensions that they can connect to source and then activate their gifts out into the world. That's what I like to do. So now let us get into that discover the gift like is this a like a book you wrote or something or movie or movement how 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 how, how that grew and came up what, what is that what is the foundation that's, of that that's a really beautiful question so the foundation of it is that it grew out of my life adversities and it's really where it came from and the adversities of my brother and I. I have a big brother and he created this project with me and also my husband Sharif Aziz. He was the co-producer and my brother was the director and I was the writer. And what happened was my brother and I had experienced so much loss at many levels when we were younger um, that we disconnected from each other. And in his growth, in his own development, um, he's a big Hollywood director, so he was very much about me, 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 money, 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 more, 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 anything I can get, 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 get. And I was all about the give, 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 give. And one day I asked him a question and I said, when does the man I know, because he's very powerful and really strong, going to match the work he's doing in the world? Like, when are you going to match the work you're doing in the world, Damien, because it's not a match? When is that going to happen? And that question 
changed him at such a deep level. You know, the power of the questions we ask determine the quality of the lives we live. And so that question fueled in him like this need to answer it. And um, and he was really good at making big movies and blowing things up and doing all of that stuff that he decided to look at that and look within. And that connected us again. And we had been very disconnected for many years and we reconnected and then together decided to share how no matter what adversity you've lived through or have experienced or are experiencing, if you're willing to look for the gift in that adversity, if you're willing to attach your passions to what you're doing in the world and your purpose, then that adversity turns into something good for you and for all those around you. And that's what we decided to do. And so when we reconnected, um, there was a lot of hubbub around it. And um, it was interesting because there were a lot of no's at first around publishing it and doing things. And I wasn't involved with the project yet. And it was actually a very different project. And then my husband, who was involved with it, said, look, we should have Cheyenne write it. And I was getting my PhD and doing education and psychology and really wanting to focus on braiding those two pieces together so that we could support personal development in a really good way. And I was like, no, we should get Jack Canfield to write it or Barbara DeAngelis or Dalai Lama. I could think of anyone better than me at that point to write it. And um, my husband said, no, I think you should write it. And so the literary manager said, all right, I'm gonna go take a, a cruise to the London Book Fair. You got two weeks. I don't know what you got. And so I dove in, like I dove into all of the information and I understood why they'd been getting no's because the information was about love. <laughs> the information was about connectivity. It was about honoring who you are, your source and your messages and learning to listen to them and then activate that because that's purpose and that's where your power is and that's where your ability to manifest the life you love exists. So that's what I saw in the videos and the transcripts and then said, we're missing women. We need so many more women in this project. Um, so I wrote the book proposal and he went to the London Book Fair and 12 countries accepted it at the book fair. And then it just continued to go from there. So it was about stepping through fear. It came to be because I was willing to step through my own fear. So how, how you came over that fear at that time, not today, today you are a different person. Yes. At that Can time. you take us back to that time and yes. Yes. try That's to explain that? How did I step through that fear? So I stepped through it. Oh, it's a good question. I had to get really clear about believing in myself, my worth, and my voice, and that what I had to say mattered, that I actually mattered as a human being. And to all your listeners out there, you all matter. You all make a difference every single day. And part of what happens in our society is we focus on what's wrong with us, schools, education, all of our whole world. We tell each other everything that's wrong with us. The shift that I had to make within myself back then was to begin to focus on what was right and wonderful about me, to give myself the, the, the esteem, the self-esteem inside, to be willing to put my voice on paper and to be willing to have people say, this is awful or this is wonderful, but I had to believe in myself enough. And so going back to stepping through the fear, it's about one step. You know, often people see, oh, they have this dream or this vision and it's so far out there. But the idea is that, the dream isn't about the goal, right? It's about the journey. It's about every step you take to get there. That's what life is. So that's how I did it. I always tell people just pick up the right foot and just move forward and the left, left will automatically be in the air and just... Yes, one step at a time and that's all it takes. And even if it's in the wrong direction, guess what? It doesn't matter because it's, the, it's a direction. And I really believe in um, Stuart Emery. He's one of the, the grandfathers of the human potential movement. And he inducted me into the Association of Transformational Leaders and he's amazing. And one of the most incredible things he taught me is course correction without invalidation. Don't ever invalidate where you've been. Every step is a step in the right direction because it's something there for you. There's a lesson to be learned that supports you on your next stepping stone. So remember, it's about the journey, 
right? It's not about getting out to that final destination. That destination is going to keep shifting and evolving as you do, right? And it's, it's knowing that you don't have to be perfect to play. It's no different than like people say, what's your passion? Yes. Uh, passion is not a thing, you know. Five <laughs> years back, it was different passion. I was pursuing something and over the years, I, I discovered within me a lot more things and I became a different person. So now passion is different. Exactly. And we evolve, right? We're, we're, we're evolutionary creatures. Every choice we make, every step we take is an evolution in who we are. And whatever goals I had like five, ten years back, I cannot just live off those because those goals are baby goals for me now. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And so that's the idea when I talk about, you know, how did I get there now? Like my goal back then was, oh my gosh, can I even write a page or two pages or a chapter, right? Can I write a book? Can I have that? And in that, so the book completed, you know, what's fascinating is the book completed and along that journey, right? people started asking me to train them and teach them. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't planning on creating a training program and training people. However, in my steps of stepping through my fear, saying yes when I wanted to say no because I was afraid. You see, this is something I want your, your listeners to hear. It's really important. There's places in you and messages and themes and things that keep showing up similar over and over and over again. Now, those messages are there for you, right? And they're there for you to, to look at and see. And when you're afraid, and it's not something that's going to hurt you, but you're just afraid because you haven't do it. It's pushing beyond what you've already known in your comfort zone. My request to you is take that step through that fear and find out what's on the other side. Because what you want is waiting there. I promise you, what you want is waiting there, but you have to be willing. You are the only one who can take that step. You are the only one, nobody else. You can be invited, everyone can invite you. Your teachers, your friends, your lovers, your doctors, your whoever, but only you can take that step and believe in you. I mean, even 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 for for the little babies, if you can stuff the food in their mouth, but they are the one who to chew, chew it. <laughs> Exactly. They have to chew it. And with babies, notice how determined they are. How many times do they fall down before they're standing and walking, right? That's the same for us. That never changes. And that's with our dreams. People look at failure as something that's bad, you know, and I want to say, let's shift our thinking about it. Let's look at failure as an opportunity for growth, right? Where's our opportunity to grow in there? I mean, as long as taking you forward, like, like, for example, I was just talking to you before, even before the interview, why I started the podcast. I started, yes. I just launched it like seven days back. And yesterday my show hit number one on all the possible categories on new, new uh, and newsworthy. Wonderful. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. But that's not what I was going to tell. I was going to say, I, I, I didn't plan anything for this, like where is, where this journey is going to lead me. It has been only like seven days. And the po you already know I was interviewing somebody else before you. That's yes. why we were trying to reschedule half an hour here and there so that I don't have to be just <laughs> sitting and waiting here. Yes. The person I just interviewed before you, like, he, he was listening to me during the interview and he said, Sean, you have so much knowledge. I got 10,000 students in one of my online program. Why don't you come and help me? Mm, in, in, last, in last one hour, that, that was the offer given to me. Yay, that's wonderful. So, so, so I was not looking for that. I did not know. I'm, I'm just taking the step forward in this direction just yes. for personal growth. Just for personal. And what are you doing? Now, this is the key for your listeners. I love this. What are you doing inside? How are you hearing your insight and your awareness, right? That's the question I get asked all the time. How do you know what's your voice? How do you know what's really speaking to you? I, I just know that it's like I, I, I live my life like that. My, 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 my passion, I tell people how to find your calling. This may be something weird for you, but actually yeah. USA Today was asking me, one of the reporters yesterday, how do you find your passion? Mm -hmm. I just replied that yesterday. I told them for average person, the easiest way is ask them to go to a bus stop and talk to some strangers. Mm -hmm. Go to the next bus stop and talk to strangers and just I have to use the word bullshit. Okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> but just go and do some BS, you yeah. know, just just yeah. talk, talk something. They are not, you don't know them. You will be talking whatever you like to talk, whatever you like to express, whatever you want to get involved in things like that. And 
do that for a couple of days and you will figure out what do you want what do you want to do what do you want to talk what excites you what excites and your eyes shine and you got a lot of energy and passion well by that time you'll know oh this is my passion what lights you up and inspires you. Yeah. That's the thing. See, I love that. So that's for your listeners, right? What lights you up and inspires you? Aside from doing the things you have to do to pay your bills and take care of your family and your life and all those things, the other part of living is paying really close attention to what lights you up, what gives you inspiration and motivation and taking little steps toward that. Like you said, you know, this was something you wanted to do. You wanted to learn more. So you decided to do a podcast and interview people. That brings you along your steps. So if you're a dancer out there and you're not dancing, go dance. If you want to teach dance, go find a place to volunteer to teach kids for a little bit. That will inspire you. If you, you know, whatever it is you want to do, find a place to honor yourself and do it. You know, meditation is an interesting thing for me. I want to chat about meditation for a moment. I'm very new at it, and I've been doing it for about 10 years, and I'm still very, very, very new. I'm a beginner, and I'm learning, and I, and I do it religiously in my own spiritual way, which is every day and every morning. However, I didn't understand when people said to me, oh, meditate, it's really good for you. Years ago, like, I just didn't quite connect what it is. Well, that's the place where you get to hear your voice, your source, your wisdom, your inner knowing. And so meditation can take on many forms. In my opinion, in my belief, it's not just sitting and clearing your mind, which is very hard to do for a lot of people. Meditation can be dancing, playing music, walking, doing art, reading, the things that allow you to create space in your being. That's meditation. Yeah, so, so that you're really lost in that. Yes, so that you are lost and you get to be as if time, what didn't exist. That's where we get to really relax our mind. That's where we get to be in flow. And many people get to that in different ways. And if you're a, just beginning on these steps, I really want to invite everyone to find a way to spend, even if it's one minute, of quiet time with yourself. It does wonders for the soul, and it's how you start to be able to know what your voice is. Actually, one of my coaches is like a Mark Waldman. Mm -hmm. He's a professor at Loyola University, Chicago. Yeah. He tells Sean, like, just just ask somebody, just do one minute, one minute's meditation. Mm -hmm. One minute, yes. Just just one minute, and it's so addictive. He can't quit after one minute. That's exactly what happens. One minute, you just take that moment for yourself. And it's like the gift you get to give to yourself, you know. And and with that gift, I want to, we were talking about gratitude before. And something that showed up for me when we were talking, I wanted to touch on it, is forgiveness. Forgiveness, mm -hmm. you know. We all go around this life burdened. Burdened with so much in our minds and our hearts around things we're angry for, people that hurt us, things we've done wrong. I want everybody to clear their plate. Forgive yourself. You have permission to start over. You have permission to love yourself and to apologize to yourself. You see, forgiveness isn't for the other person. This is a real key concept. We think, oh, I, I forgive so, you know, they're going to feel better. It's for you. Right? The more you forgive, the more space you create within your being to fill with what you really desire. So forgiveness is about peace. And gratitude always brings me to forgiveness. For some reason, that word, when I'm in gratitude, I go to forgiveness. For some reason, that's the next space in my next, next higher level. Next higher level, yes. I just, that's where I go. And then I go, wow, I'm in forgiveness. And then I'm forgiving me and I'm forgiving others around me and then I find ease right and my heart starts to go ease and I used to think oh what do you need to do to be happy right as we grow and change evolve one of my trainings used to be how many how often do you want to be happy do you know what I ask now how often do you want to be at peace you know because yeah. peace to me happiness is a, is a small piece of peace so, so pe forgive pe peace peace is the bigger achievement Yes. Happiness is just like a little piece of puzzle. A little piece of that bigger achievement. And so 
what do you need to do in your life to create peace? And for me, gratitude and forgiveness are two of the key ingredients that actually create space and energy for you to start activating the things you want to do in life. Like the forgiveness? Mm -hmm. Is this like, like if you owe millions of dollars to somebody and you just paid the debt? Yes. <laughs> Then you are done. You don't then feel that. You don't, you feel, don't that. feel that. Right. Exactly. Like it's gone from you. Exactly. And so how do we do that? Right. How do we clear that space? And what happens? What if we all just take a moment for a minute? Really? Just take a moment and get yourself comfortable. And take a really nice deep breath in. And just feel yourself. Feel your body, your spirit, and your mind and focus on gratitude. Be grateful for life in this moment. In this moment, here you are listening to this podcast, focusing on yourself and your breathing. And I want you to forgive yourself right now in this moment. Say, I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive myself for everything I didn't know before I knew it. Because we only know what we know when we know it, right? And so we have to forgive ourselves. We have to create space. What happens when you forgive yourself? Peace. Peace, exactly. And then you get to create and bring that peace out into the world around you, right? And yeah, because you, if you are at peace, you are happy, th then only you can distribute that. Actually, I have to show you something. Yes. Here's a book, Broadcasting Happiness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. I interviewed Michelle Galen the other day. Mm -hmm. She and her husband, Sean Acord, they work with Oprah on happiness programs. So she is the one who was like saying, we are all distributing happiness. If you are happy, you are at peace, right? Yes. So peace and happiness is more or less the same thing at different scale. Different, so if yeah, you yeah. can broadcast happiness or she was saying just just your presence makes a difference. If if you are happy, people around you, your staff, your employees or your your family, your spouse, your wife, your kids, everybody will see. Like a lot of places somebody walk in and all of a sudden everybody just changes. Exactly. And just, so just, Barbara go ahead, so, so, so the other person is bringing different kind of energy because it, it could be bad or good or whatever, but that person is at that right or wrong emotional stage. Yes. Yes. And so Dr. Barbara DeAngelis says, when you show up, who shows up? Uh. Uh, so when you show up, whatever energy you bring to a place... Uh -huh. Who else is showing up? So when you actually show up, who shows up, right? How do other people behave when you show up, depending upon the energy you bring to that space? And when you authentically show up on another level, she means when you really show up as you, who shows up around you? Your life starts to shift and things start to change. You know, often we think, doors close and we wonder why? why that was for me wait a minute why did that close and then this door closes and this door and you're like why is that happening and i'll tell you why because those aren't your doors right if the door doesn't open it's not your door and it's because universe world whatever you want to call all the different gods and goddesses they have a different idea and a plan for you and your purpose right for years i'd like I was been in education and for years and years, 20 plus years, and then I stepped into this other world and did this. And I've been trying to, for a little bit, quiet life down a little bit more. My daughter is 12 and I'm raising her. So I was thinking, I'll go back and work in schools, right? I'll go get a job and work in school and just keep life going. Do you think that I'm allowed to do that? No, not for that, a second. That door is not opening anymore. <laughs> It's not even available to me. It's like a many people look at me like, no, of course you can't do work here. You can come train us. You can do other things. And I'm thinking, why? I want to work there, right? So I just want you all to, to hear this, to get this. I'm going for jobs and I'm being told no. 
and it's okay. And do you know why? Because that's not what's for me. I don't need that necessarily. I was just looking to get into a groove I knew that was comfortable for me. But guess what? The universe doesn't want me being comfortable because I don't get to live into my highest potential. I don't get to keep stepping into my higher purpose. And so when those doors started closing and I remembered my work and my teachings and my programs and how I really and what I, my beliefs, right? My beliefs, because I practice what I believe. And I went, okay, those doors aren't for me. I'm just going to sit back. A day and a half after I was told no around something I thought for sure was happening. And I wasn't even disappointed when I got the no, but a day and a half later, the most amazing opportunity came up. And if I had said yes, or that other door had opened, I couldn't have said yes to this opportunity that was a perfect match for me, right? A perfect match. And so that's what I want your listeners to know. I want them to know that if a door is closing, it's okay. Don't think there's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. You're wonderful. You're perfect just the way you are. We're all perfectly imperfect, right? Just keep stepping into another direction that honors your authentic self, that honors your passions, and honors your gifts, because that's where the life that you love exists. Yesterday, I was reading somebody's email. The first line I just remember, I think it was like, just be yourself, be your authentic one, because everyone else is taken. <laughs> exactly. You really, and the more you do that, the more you shine. And then you shine and you become a, a magnet, right? And then people start coming to you and, and being, how do you have that? I want some of what you have. And all you're doing is being you. You see, that's what really inspires other people when you're just being you. For a long time, I was scared to be me, by the way. I was really afraid. I thought, oh, people are going to think, what is she thinking? Or does she, she doesn't know what she's talking about. But when I gave myself permission to be me, I was stunned at who wanted to listen. Actually, you're reminding me something. When I started this podcasting. Yes. Like I started recording about two and one last six weeks back. And I asked all my employees and the staff, they, they, they helped me and support me and, and I bounce ideas. So, mm -hmm. one, so we wrote so many scripts for the episode zero where I'm introducing why I'm even doing this. So, so one of my staff told me, Sean, just look in the mirror, talk to yourself. You know, whatever you do, you are just looking for people like you. They are mm -hmm. the one who is going to listen and talk to you. Yes. Right? So yes. I, I, I religiously, I, I, I encourage you to listen to my zero, the opening episode. Yes. Then you will truly know who I am. Then you say, that's beautiful. I love that. And I love your passion, by the way. I want to speak about passion for a moment. What is life without passion? Passion in all areas, right? If you want to know what it feels like to live, get passionate. Get passionate about yourself, about your work, about the people in your life, about your family, your loved ones, your friends, your community, your gifts, get passionate because that's when you start to really feel the essence of life. And there's many levels to passion. There's quiet passion, there's excited passion, but get passionate, get clear, right? Have clarity with your intentions. And I'm a certified passion test facilitator in the work of the world out in transformational leaders there's i don't know if you ever heard of the passion test and it's also for your listeners to hear chris and janet atwood um, created the passion test and they are part of the transformational leadership council out in the world and they're also my mentors and they're incredible and when i was writing discover the gift i was really struggling believing in myself and thinking how can i step into that world you know and i was just i was working it you know and and Janet and Chris came to me and they said, we want to reflect for you who you are and notice all the things that have been happening since you started connecting with your passions, like really clearly with your passions and honoring your voice. Now, lucky for me, I know what my passions are, right? Because I grew up in education and counseling and psychology. Many, many people don't. So they created this incredible program. It's a book called The Passion Test and they certify facilitators. And in that, what it does, I loved when you were talking about how you get clear about your passions, you start talking to random people, sharing what you love. 
and they have this incredible process and it takes a couple hours and within a few hours you come out with like your five top passions having no idea some of them you're like oh yeah i knew others you were like i had no idea that even existed and when jack canfield did it and other transformational leaders they too were stunned and it's a process of looking at what's most important to you what matters most so how can i do that or my so listeners you, and viewers, where can they go for that? So you can do that with me. You could contact me and I do that. Um, that's part of what I love to do. And it's actually the beginning of my larger programs is I run everyone through the passion test because to me, it's the foundation of everything you do after that, right? Everything you're going to focus on and put your energy into. It's like knowing yourself. It's exactly exactly and so i tell you what i'll do for you and your listeners and then you guys can contact me for those that would like to complete the program you can all have a very special rate the rate is normally three hundred dollars a session for the passion test and i will do a fifty percent off for you and all of your listeners but the first homework before you contact me is you have to write ten sentences of when my life is ideal i am and then finish the sentence and so like when my life is ideal, I am vacationing regularly with my family. That's one example. So how about you? One example of when your life is ideal. I'm just talking to people like you. Yes. Okay. So we start with when my life is ideal, I am. Go ahead. When my life is ideal, I am. My life is ideal, then I am a perfect person. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So in a perfect person, what does that actually mean to you? So what do you love to do with your time? I love to grow and learn and read and educate people and see people succeed. I love that. Okay. So if you could grow and learn and see people succeed or be a perfect person, which is more important to you? seeing other people succeed because it gives me like a happiness and sense of achievement. Beautiful. So we just did a very small piece of the passion test. You see how you told me two things. You would have alerted me before the interview. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. So that's what I want you to think about. When my life is ideal, I am. And then we'll give people information if anyone wants to contact me and, and do any further work, feel free. And you, you and I will do it no matter what. Thank you. You are yeah. so, you're so kind. Mm -hmm. you, you. We will put all the information on the website. Perfect. So one of my book here, you can see in the camera, some of the listeners will be listening only the audio podcast version. Look at, look at one of my book. It says get published, get noticed. Yes. Author means authority. That's one of my trademark. Yeah. But that is like, that is written to help people to grow their business so that they're seen as an authority in their industry, in their yeah. business. Yes. But the talk we are having with you today have really nothing to do like how to promote your business or anything. Yes, thank you. But, yeah. but when I tell business people to write a book or coaches, even coaches can write a book and shine, you know, I, I tell them, even if they never thought of writing a book, when you, when you start writing or write a book, at the end, you discover so much about you, you, you become a different person. That's what I wanted to get back to. But, so. but before you answer, I will let me finish one more sentence. Like a lot of time, like husband, wife, spouse, friend, kid, somebody all of a sudden say something about the person. They say, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I, I, I didn't mean that. BS. You mean that you did not know that. <laughs> right? Yes. yes. So, so at, in that moment, you discovered how you think about that person. Even you yes. did not know that. So, what are you talking about? Like, I, I, I didn't mean that. You, you, you don't know you mean that or not. You have no way. So, same way I tell if you write a book about anything, about your life, your story, your business or anything, during the process, you discover so much about yourself. Yes. Even if you write a book and throw in the trash, you become a different person. Absolutely. Oh, I discovered so much. Discover the gift. Exactly part of why it's even titled Discover the Gift is because it's about the discovery process of who you really are. 
right? And what was fascinating about writing Discover the Gift is that it was impossible for me not to change and not to evolve. I was engulfed in one, some of the most incredible teachers of our time that currently exist today around spirituality and self-development and personal development and neuroscience. And, um, and what really happened for me inside is I became who I am. That's the change. I learned to not be afraid in that process. And I slowly over time with every word I wrote and every validation I got back from myself or other people, the layers of my onion started peeling off. You know, if we think of ourselves for a moment as an onion, right, we have the sweet, sweet, sweet core in the center, and we've got all these other layers on the outside. So bitterness, bitterness had to be removed. <laughs> bitterness has to be removed. We have to unwrap the gift, right? We have to unwrap and unfold what's on the outside of us to discover what's really inside. And that's what happened when I wrote Discover the Gift is I, I learned that I was worthy, that I had important things to say, and not that it was me, but more that I was a conduit. I think that's the big thing I learned, that I was a conduit for information and energy because I often don't know why I know what I know and I know that and I know it to be true and if I go look it up it's true the science or whatever will prove it but it's about being open and available enough to become a conduit for source to flow through and to other people and so what changed in me was I've always been very spiritual always and one of the biggest changes is that I got really clear that I was not religious at all, but I was beyond spiritual, that I felt the connection of all. Now, when I was younger, I felt all these things. I was very aware of all these things. And whenever I would speak them, people would tell me cuckoo or woo woo, or you don't know what you're talking about. So I learned to get very quiet with it and then decided to educate myself in the conservative world in the every day and now so that I would feel good about myself. When I wrote Discover the Gift, I realized that all of that is actually who I am and who I have been all along. And those layers started to come off and I started to activate a source in me that I had never experienced before. And my self-esteem rose. So now you're a butterfly. <laughs> now I'm a butterfly, but I was really, you know, in the dark and I want to let people know I was in the dark too for a really long time and I hung upside down and it was scary and it, that whole process of becoming is never ending, right? However, when you're in that really dark, dark place, know that it's almost over, right? Your, your wings are about to hatch. I think I saw one of the trailer of your movie. Mm -hmm. And I saw that Shiri Shiri Ravi Shankar of Shri Art Shri of Living. Yes. Uh, do you have any relationship with that group, Art of Living or something? Very or... much. Very much so. I love uh, I saw him because a minute back he was telling like opening the gift and I that's... saw him opening the box. Yes. that's the That was the quote I was just about to say. His quote is you have to unwrap the gift to see what's inside. That's his holiness. Sri Sri says that and very much we're very connected with the art of living and with his teachings. He is one of the most loving, phenomenal teachers I've ever had the, the honor of being around. So you met him personally? We met him and when we videotaped him, yes. And you know he actually glows like he glows, like when we videotaped him, the lighting, we didn't need to do much lighting. That was his own being. Just, he's amazing. If you go to Facebook, my page, you can see my picture with him. Okay, good. I'll tell you, he's amazing. I just love I'm, him. As earlier we were talking, when, when, when you walk in somewhere, when you come somewhere, what else show up? Yes. So exactly. when he shows up, peace shows up. Peace shows up. That's true. And you know, when he says, world leaders, I want a meeting, he is the only person in the world who can say, I want every world leader sitting down and they come. And do you know why they come? Because he's the spiritual leader for over half of our world. How many people is he the spiritual leader for? 
so many, right? And he preaches love and understanding and joy and world leaders listen to him. He's a very intelligent man. Cheyenne, I'm having so much happiness and peaceful time with you. I'm enjoying it. But eventually the show had to end. We are very close to the end of the show, but I'm still not satisfied. So I really want something more about your discover the gift. How can you teach me and my listeners and viewers in real time right now, how they should discover their gift and what, what is this gift? Mm -hmm. I love that. That's such a great question. And first of all, the gift is you. You know, listeners, it's all of you. It's who you really are. It's that that child inside of you that has big dreams and plans and is really clear about what you're up to. That's the gift. And to discover that your job and your purpose is to do whatever work you need to do to be the adult that little child needed so that you can live that purpose and that gift out really powerfully and positively into the world. So that's the gift. The gift is you. It's every life experience you've ever had and understanding that they've all been a teacher for you, a course, right? So if you look at for a moment, listeners, look at some of your biggest adversities that you've had right, that you've, you've made it through. And if you just take a moment and take a deep breath in and close your eyes and think about that adversity that you survived. Now look at what was the blessing in disguise? What was the gift that actually came out of that adversity? How are you different? What do you do differently now that you didn't do before because of it? How has it impacted your behavior and the people around you and your life? You know, there, that's one immediate way and I'm gonna bring you through a few key steps, but think about that for a moment. And notice that blessing. Notice how what felt like something awful and I guarantee you it was and probably still is in many ways but notice what that created for you in your life in good ways. So for example, my mother died when I was 12 in a car accident, a tragic car accident. And what showed up out of that for me as a, as a gift and as many gifts, one is discover the gift. This project, this work would never have been here if she didn't die. I never would have had the need to create such a project. You see, I had to heal myself. That's the idea of Discover the Gift is I needed to heal. And so I shared my own process for healing with the intention that others would be able to find some healing within that themselves, right? So looking at our the blessings that come out of it, my mother died, Discover the Gift exists, but in that process, my mother gave me three incredible things, aside from the love that she instilled in me. And she gave me her three best friends, right? So my mom passed away and these three women who were her best friends are still completely engulfed in my life, everywhere in my life. And every piece of me, I am a piece of all of them. I am a piece of my mom, I'm a piece of Connie, I'm a piece of Jackie, and I'm a piece of Lanny. These women all became my mom and I'm able to be the person I am today because my mother passed away and these women showed up in my life. So that was my blessing in disguise, right? And that then allowed me to share me powerfully in the future in other ways. So in so many different ways in our life to discover the gift, your gift, is look at where you were hurt and look at how you healed and what that blessing was. And if you haven't activated that blessing yet, now is a good time to look at what step you could take to activate that blessing into the world because that's your gift. That is your gift, one of the many. So that's one way that you can discover one of your gifts. You know, I think about the, um, in the United States, we have a thing called the Amber Alert System. The Amber Alert system was a system that was created out of one family's biggest adversity. 
They lost their little girl. Somebody stole their little girl. And at the time, we had no system in the United States to even begin to track children that were stolen. Like, how do you even find them? They're gone. Poof. Well, this family said, not on our watch. They took our little girl. Guess what? We're going to create a system that if that happens again, which it will, something will be in place that maybe one child will be saved. So they created the Amber Alert system. They took their biggest adversity in life and created something that was of service to so many others. And I'm so grateful for them. Right. And so those are some ways that we can really start to discover the gift and how it heals us and supports others. So one way, is there anything coming up for you? Yeah, I was going to say like the other day, like somebody was saying like the, the, how to find positive out of every negative situation. Yes. The girl was saying like, it, it was like last winter, I was, I was just watching live webinar with her. Mm -hmm. She was saying like uh, my sewage leaked in my basement and my house is stinking. And luckily she was able to find a plumber even in that snowy day, the plumber came and and cleaned up, but it's, it's still stinky. So she was saying, like, my husband is saying, like, we are very lucky, like, the, I'm very happy. So she said, how the hell you can be happy when house is like in this condition? She said, my husband said, because I'm not that guy, that's, that's not my job to go and clean other people's gutters in the snow. <laughs> Okay. So, 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 situation is so bad. Like the sewage is leaking in in their basement. In their basement. And they they can see the other side. Like some uh, somebody have to at least do that job. Yes, like someone has to do that job exactly. You know, and that's a great point. Yeah. So, 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 so you you cannot you. In other words, like looking for the gift is no different than taking a step back and looking at the with bird's eye, seeing your own life, and trying to see like is that you 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 are inside the box and you can see only negativity. Is that all, or <laughs> there's something more than that? Exactly, and there's so much more, and so. That's one real way, you know, another way you can discover your gift and start accessing some of your own insight, right? Your intuition. A lot of it is about getting to a place where you can clear the your all the, the chatter of your mind and the chatter of all the people around you and the things I'm supposed to, I should, I should be. It's about clearing that, right? Getting to the core of that sweet onion and getting to who you really are. And when you get there, right? Focus on what's right and wonderful about you. Can I tell you, it amazes me when I sit with teams of people and people I'm working with and I say, well, tell me three things that's right and wonderful about you. Do you know how hard that is for people? <laughs> it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing how hard it is for people. And so my, my request is that listeners take a moment. Take a moment and think about two things right now, just two two things that you're good at, that you're wonderful at, a trait, part of your moral makeup, um, a gift, a talent, a passion you have. Okay, think about that. And if you're having a hard time thinking about what that is, ask some people. In fact, what I'd like all of you to do is when we finish this and you have time today, this podcast is Ask the people in your life what they think your gifts are. Ask eight people what they think your gifts are. And listen deeply. Like really listen to the reflection of how they see you and what they think is wonderful and special about you. You'll be surprised. Some things are going to be very similar. Some things you might have never even realized are a way you show up in the world in a really positive way. And now here's another key thing. Be prepared to share with them what you think their gifts are because they're definitely going to ask. <laughs> so it's, it goes both ways. And so to discover your gift, I believe there are eight key steps that we really have to go through. And the first one is being receptive and open, right? To, to anything to happen, we have to have receptivity and we have to be open and available, right? Step two is intention. We have to have clear intention about what we're up to and why we're doing it. Focused clarity intention, right? Where is your intention? 
And are you having integrity with it? And are you involving yourself with the things that you're intending, right? And then you need to activate, right? So first it's being open and receptive, having clear intention, learning how to activate things into the world. Now that in its own self is a gift, right? I have a coach that teaches me how to activate places I don't know in business, right? Because I'm an educator and a counselor and this work has taught me how to become a businesswoman as well and that's new for me. So I too get coaching and counseling in all the areas where I have opportunities for growth. And that's part of how we learn how to activate into the world is that we get to reflect. And so after activation comes sharing. Once you know how to activate, then you get to powerfully share, right, into the world. And to be able to powerfully share, the next step is energy. Understanding energy and that everything is energy. And if you want to share your gifts, which I think you all definitely should be doing, and I'm telling you should, even though I normally don't say that, but I say that because it's the opportunity for you to live and love your life and shine brightly and feel the essence of your soul because it's why you're here. Yeah, because if, if you're not contributing to other people's life, you're living like a like an animal or a plant. What are you doing? You're right. So it's, you know, that's why you're here. I believe discover the gift. It, the, the title is actually discover the gift. It's why we're here, right? We're here to discover our gifts and share them. So once you understand energy, right? Then you go into step six. So we just went through the first five steps. And five is energy. Six is the gift of adversity, right? And understanding adversity, I, I've spent a bunch of time on it on purpose because many of us live there all the time. We live in our past. We live in what happened to us, not what's happening now in our present, right? And we get to put meaning on all of that. See, now that's something that I want you all to understand is that life happens to all of us, good and bad, and we get to attach the meaning to it that we want to, right? We can make it mean anything. Now, my mom died, and I could have made it mean my world was over. I could have made it mean I had nothing for the rest of my life, but instead, I made it mean, wow, I need to be of service because that's how I heal, right? But you can make it mean, you can shift it, right? We actually have the power with our minds to shift what our life experiences mean. And so if you can honor your adversities and find those blessings in disguise and see where you have energy with that, that's a gift. That's where some of your gifts are, right? And then continuing on, the rest of the steps are, seven is really about the conscious and compassionate world, right? About how do we create that in unity and that we are one. And we do that by honoring our gifts and sharing them and inspiring others and being of service. You see, when we're of service to ourselves, truly of service to ourselves, we truly are of service to others, right? That's that's one of the things is that it's, an, it's a feedback loop. It's infinite. It's like the, the infinity sign, right? The more we give, the more we get of anything. Well, not only that, the other day I was interviewing somebody and he was saying like, if somebody come to me and say, teach me this or that, if I'm, if I'm not good at that, I always say, go to Sean, go to this person, that person. He mm -hmm. said, I'm not sending those referrals or those prospective clients to them, expecting them to send customers to me. But he said, if I send to enough people, eventually somebody is sending something to me. Or somebody is yes. referring other clients to me. So, yes. so if you are giving and sharing and giving and sharing, it does not mean like that person have to pay you back. But no, but yes, we are all one. So some somebody there will be balancing. There is a balancing act. So somebody will be sending love and happiness and business and, and everything towards you. Yes, exactly. You know, someone said to me few people actually on Facebook have said to me, oh, it's so wonderful. You always share other authors and leaders quotes and their work. And I said, absolutely. They inspired me. They're why I'm who I am. And they're like, but you don't always share yours. In fact, very infrequently. And I said, exactly, because all of, they inspired me. Those are the things that inspired me, right? Everybody else. It's not about me. It's about how that work inspired me and shifted something in me that I can be who I am to inspire you, right? How do we authentically become who we are and allow our life experiences 
to be gifts for us instead of adversities. You see, that's the key when we can see those experiences as gifts, as teachers, as our life's curriculum, then we can take what we've learned and put it inside and then go, when my life is ideal, I am, right? What is it that I am when my life is ideal? Because that's how you really access and share your gifts. Yeah, but everybody try to connect everything to money. That's that's unfortunate part. Well, but that's a true part of having to live. It's unfortunate. However, we do have to live, right? So people say to me, I want to discover my gift. I'm going to quit my job and go do this. And I go, whoa, 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 yo, don't quit your job. <laughs> Not yet anyways, right? We have to learn to live a balanced life. We have to be able to pay our bills and eat and take care of life and we also have to make really quality choices with the time that we have when we're not doing those things, right? Life is a lot about choice. But you have aligned your purpose and your profession in one. Yes, and it took me 27 years to figure that out. It's not like it didn't happen overnight. However, what, what is true of me, and I want it to be true for everyone, is that I really have the ability to be aware of my thinking and to be aware of my heart and to watch myself and go, oh, that's working or, oh, that's not resourceful. Let me change that for myself. And here's a key. The reason I can do that is I don't make myself wrong for not knowing something. I don't make my myself wrong for doing it a certain way. I just go, oh, that's not working. Let me change that, right? If you make yourself wrong, you stop yourself immediately. So here's one thing our world does. They say, stand and face your fear. Notice the language, right? Our language creates our world. If I stand and face my fear, I'm blocked. I'm stopped. There's nothing else for me to do but face it. If I say to you, look at your fear and step through it, that's a very different energetic conversation. And the more you step through your fears, the more you find out what your gifts are. What's that one thing, listeners? There's something out there every single one of you really want to do. You all have something you really want to do, but you think you have to be perfect to play. And I'm here to tell you, you do not have to be perfect to play. And that one thing that you really, really want to do is for you. It's for you. Just move forward and you will feel perfect. Move forward. Go do one thing. Toward, I mean, people want to know how do you discover it. It's that you actually have to take action. You can't sit and think, right? Part of the, I, the law of attraction created uh, a myth out in the world. And the myth it created was that people can just sit back and think a good thought and think that all of this abundance will show up on their plate and they'll feel good and everything's perfect. It doesn't work like that. You can, you have to, it begins with the thought. That's absolutely yes where it begins. You have to think it and you have to be congruent with your feelings with it. You see a lack of congruency leaves energy in all these different places. But when it's congruent, when your thoughts and feelings and actions are in alignment, that's when you get to live a life you love. Actually, one of my mentors is John Asraf. Mm -hmm. His life was featured in, I think, the movie The Secret. Yes, yeah. He's in a... that, they show you just, you just, you just believe in that power, and just things happen. So even he says there's a missing element in that story because it doesn't happen. Like when it... you align all your thoughts and action and activities, but the more more important is taking action. If you are it's not taking... taking any action. It's the key thing that's missing from The Secret, you know, and I love um, most of the people in The Secret are my colleagues and I adore them and they're wonderful. And uh, Michael Beckwith, Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith is one of my dear, dear friends and mentors. And I love him. Whenever I graduate my um, certified coaches, my life coaches, we go to Agape and he graduates us and he has everyone stand up. It's wonderful. I love him. He's amazing. Um, but it's true. So the key is that you have to take action. Right. That's the, the missing ingredient. And thank you for bringing us back is that without the action, it's just a thought. Right. And what happens is when our feelings, we think, oh, I want that. But our feelings are I don't deserve it. I can't have it. And then we don't take action toward it. So that's how the energy gets split. 
So when you think, I desire that, and you know, I deserve that, and then you take an action to create that, that's alignment, that's congruency. But to desire something and think you don't deserve it will never be a match. A law of attraction always works for me. Things to start falling on my lap. Think about that. I, I thought of doing this podcasting. I just launched last week, but in the meantime, I had 60 people on my calendar. Right. How? I found you. I had been chasing you and requesting you to spare some time for me and be my guest on my show. What show? There is no show. <laughs> but 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 you were able to believe yes. how you were able to believe because you saw the energy, the emotion and the Your action passion. and passion and everything aligned. Yes, exactly. It was congruent. You were very clear, right? Congruency. Listeners, if you don't know the word, look it up. It's about when things are in alignment, when your actions, your thoughts, and your feelings are all the same, that they are together, right? That's when things will unfold in beautiful ways and things start falling on your lap. That's when the law of attraction, just like you're talking about, works. It's those pieces together. Think about that. I had like it reminded you, even though you were getting reminders for this interview from automated system, I personally reached you out. Yeah. Like this morning I reminded you and I talked to you and I told you like I'm here early and you know I'm waiting for your just to talk to you and you say well I'm ready we can start early. Yeah. How how I got that and how I we started early and now I can do something else and I already achieved this so I'll be looking forward to the next interview. How? How? Action. Yeah. Action, because you took action. Yeah. Exactly. And that's how what people say to me, how did you do that? How did you create, discover the gift? I said, I created it. I took action for two years. I did nothing but raise my child, love my husband, and create, discover the gift, right? And love the people around me. But that's what people would giggle. They'd come to visit me. And, and this is for everyone to really know when you're really in your element, right? In your element, in your gift, time flies and it changes and things become different. So people would come visit me and they'd go, oh, hey, look at you. Because why? I'd be in my, I have these, my favorite pink slippers. It's what I write. I wear these pink slippers when I write. It's silly. But anyway, so I'd be in my pink slippers, my bathrobe, and my hair's like out to here. And I'd be like, because I'm in it. I'm taking action and nothing else could infiltrate, right? I had to be in that action. And that's how it gets created. Anything is with action. Oh, not only that, when you are doing in that stage, you are limiting, like you are working unlimited hours and yes. you are not even complaining. <laughs> not even complaining because yeah. that's the, exactly it because you're living your gift. There's no complaint. It was seven days a week. It was two years, seven days a week, nonstop. We, we actually lived on top of the the movie studio where we made Discover the Gift. So we never left. I wrote it, made the movie and lived in that same place for two years with my daughter and my husband. Wow. Come on, guys. You guys are listening and watching. You have to take some action. Otherwise, action. otherwise, you can watch this show. You can listen to this podcast and you can listen to 20 other podcasts and listen to uh, yeah. all the best leaders out there. It's true. No. Action starts with your first step. So you have to take a step. You have to get up and do it. Like just Nikes, just do it. Just do it. Exactly. You have to take the steps. Without steps, you're sitting thinking and not living and you get and you're watching other people live the dream that you might be dreaming, right? But guess what? Nobody else gets to live it better than you do because nobody thinks it the way you do, right? Nobody creates it the way you do. That's why you're the gift. I what have, you have to offer. I, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt in the middle, no, but okay. I'm getting so excited to say I always tell people there's only one Sean Chabra. Yes, exactly. Only one. There's only one Cheyenne Joy Aziz. I'm a tree and you're a tree and together we're a forest. Mm -hmm. Yes, but individually we grow. Our branches grow in the directions they need to grow to catch the light, right? And it's always in action. A tree is always in action. Even when it's dormant in the winter, it's in action. There's something happening. So even when you're meditating, you're in action. Even when you're resting, right? And so those are all choices, by the way. Action takes choice. So it's about the actions and the choices that support those actions. 
can I invite you for another episode? Oh, please. I would be so honored. I feel like we're just getting started. I love, I love discussing with you and chatting with you. It's so wonderful. So nice. So nice. So, so, so let us end this show today, but I cannot just end like this. I would like to ask you a very special question, actually. Okay. In last 30 minutes, we were talking like, at least you have used the word spirituality two to five times, maybe. Mm -hmm. Could you tell my listeners and viewers like how you define what is spirituality? Mm, that's such a great question. Spirituality is for me, it's connecting really deeply with my own inner wisdom and understanding that that space behind my mind's eye is all and that it's the universe and that we're all connected um, and all it's that we're all connected that you are as important as the child outside the door as the other being being born as the grandfather going that spirituality is about the development of our own personal evolution right we're each developing and evolving with every choice we make and every step we take and i think spirituality is very different for different people to me it's that it's not about religious religion at all it's not about organized religion it's about honoring your love and your spirit yeah that's what it is to me very nice, very nice. We are all one, you know. One, spirituality you know? is nothing more than just look inside whatever you are. That's yes. what a spirituality That's what is. is. You know, and, and the very first thing I wanted to say to you, and I'm going to say it, is nature. Nature is spirituality to me. The more I sit in nature, the more I am aware of how connected we all are. And that's what it is. It's that we're one. Definitely. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's and, such a and I enjoyed it. Yay! Now you can say anything you want to to my listeners. Actually, before you say bye. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Sean. I enjoyed this, and I really want to acknowledge you for creating and putting together your vision, like from intention to manifestation. That's what it takes, right? You intend something, then you have to manifest it, and the manifestation is all about taking action. Right. And what I want to say to all the listeners out there is remember that who you are and what you have to give is really important. We really want what you have to share because it's going to inspire and change someone in your community and someone you might not even know about just because you're stepping into your highest potential. So do me a favor and do yourself a favor and honor your inner wisdom and your knowing. Take a deep breath and get ready for the journey of a lifetime, right? Discover your gift and honor yourself. And I look forward to connecting with you again, Sean. Sure. Thank, you. Thank you, thank you. Discover your gift, guys. Discover your gift, Bye. honor your passions. Bye. Do not throw that old phone away. Your trash may be hidden gold. We want your old device and will pay top dollar for it. Our process is as easy as one, two, three. We offer no obligation sales. If you have a problem with the price that we gave you, we will return the device to you at no charge. Fast payment, free shipping, free data wipe, risk-free transaction. Buybackqueen.com.